this is about the same as the field speed on a modern combine. We're taking it real easy. The 55 is home. That's always exciting because that means that we're about to harvest soybeans. We have some stuff to do on it. I'm going to make a checklist, a little maintenance checklist to go through. It's not going to be like last year. If you watched my video from last year, we had just purchased this at that time. Before that, we didn't own a combine. So we always had things custom harvested. So this will be our second year using this combine to, com to uh, harvest beans. And uh, it worked really well for us last year. It did a nice job, got a real clean grain sample out of it. Um, I really didn't have any complaints for something that we bought kind of untested and had to use. We, we purchased it right before harvest time, so we kind of had to boogie to get it in good working order and um, put, it to, put it to work for the first time for us. But uh, this year we have much less to do on it to get it ready, you know. One of the nice things about a small farm like ours is that if you do good maintenance on the equipment, it doesn't get that much use in any given year. Last year this thing harvested 32 acres of soybeans. It was about three days worth of work. Uh, so it didn't get that much run time on it. We just dropped the oil out of it. We're gonna put fresh oil in it. Um, the oil that was in there wasn't too bad. It looked, it looked pretty clean, which is to be expected given how little work it really did. And um, I just need to hit all the grease points and then there's a couple of things that I want to take care of that uh, didn't get done last year. Probably should have been done, but I just ran out of time and they were lower priority things. So that's about it. Today is Saturday and um, we should be harvesting. I'm thinking we had a hard freeze the last couple of nights. Uh, so we should be able to get in the fields and maybe start harvesting soybeans later this week. Thinking maybe Thursday, Friday, Saturday. It'll take about three days to get done again, um, starting at late morning, maybe around noon, and uh, make sure the dew is off the beans. And um, hopefully this thing can get through three days of harvesting without any trouble, and then we'll be in good shape. But I'll show you what I'm working on and uh, kind of take you through as we fix it up. What we've done so far this year is installed a new starter. When we went to fire this combine up, we realized that was all locked up and uh, had corroded around the front bushings. Uh, there was a bit of condensation in that front uh, reduction gear housing area. Um, and I think probably it's just a standard thing that happens when it sits for a long time. Uh, and since we weren't using this combine for any midsummer small grain harvest or anything like that, it went the whole year without being run. So I think we learned our lesson from that, that we'll probably fire this thing up in the spring, even just to let it run for a little bit and then shut it back down again, just to make sure that it uh, runs every once in a while and keeps things freed up. But... So a new starter, and then we have a new rotor. We were gonna get a new cap as well for in the ignition module there. Um, but uh, we couldn't get a cap quick enough from John Deere, so we just put the new rotor in. The tab on top of the rotor, the little electrode tab, was burned through from the main ignition coil. Just needed to be replaced, standard thing. And then a new battery. The one that was in here was a marine deep cycle battery, and I just didn't feel like it cranked the engine very well. In retrospect, um, it was probably the starter that was really the issue, that the starter was turning over hard because there were times when I would hit the ignition button and just hear a click, and I thought, uh oh, what's going on? But then I'd hit it again and it would go. So I think the, the starter was having trouble even last fall, and I just didn't recognize it. I thought it was a gremlin in the system, and uh, turns out it was really trying to tell me that it was in need of attention. But at any rate, new battery doesn't hurt, and um, now we're gonna change oil. We've already got the oil dropped out. Dad went and got the high mileage motor oil for the old 303 gas, which really, when you think about it, seems appropriate. So we're going to put uh, 10 quarts of oil in this and change the filter, and that will be the start of our maintenance regimen on the 55. And it shouldn't take too long, and this thing will be ready to work. So one of the things that's bothered me, or bothered me last year, was that this little auger section, there's these little add-on auger sections up here in the grain tank. And this one, which is, goes from right at the point of my finger to right there, was slid over here, where that cotter key is, way far away from the rest of the auger flighting. And what it would do is, as the tank filled up with beans, it's got this, these tank extensions on here, it would shove all the beans way off to this side, so I would get a big pile of beans over here while this side was still really low. So I'm going to attempt to just slide this over, and actually, there's not a hole in here for it, I would like to remove that flighting entirely, but to do so, I'd have to take this bearing off the end. And I don't think I want to get into a project quite of that magnitude. But, so for now, I'm going to take this cotter key out, I'm going to slide this flighting over, and I'm going to 
dink around with it a little bit and then put the cotter key in and then that way when the tank fills up I'm hoping that this flighting will just stand still and let the shaft rotate inside of it and then the beans will just pile up uh, next to it and if that causes me a problem during harvest it's I can I can drill a hole through the shaft or I can do something else to try to set that but I I would really like the beans as they're coming in and the tank is filling up to stop right here and then they'll just pile up nicely from that point so I'm gonna try to do something with this well this probably isn't the most elegant solution so now this can slide back and forth but it can also spin on the shaft whereas this one is locked into place so hopefully this will just sort of freewheel until the beans get up to it and then once it hits the bean level it should just stop and the shaft will rotate around it and the beans will quit being pushed over here and if this manages to make its way over to that cotter key I kind of bent this a little bit because it was sticking over and it won't uh, won't catch and won't try to make it spin. So one of those things where we'll try it in the field and if it gives me trouble, I'll just have to run home with the combine and find a way to remove it. Worst case scenario, I can take a cutting blade and just split this thing down the middle and take it off. And that way I wouldn't have to disassemble the bearings. I'm at the end of my first day of prep work on the combine here. I didn't take a lot of video, nothing too eventful. Mainly got the oil changed and greased everything really good. And I've just been going through and checking chains and belts and uh, all the little odds and ends that you need to address. But really, there's not too much to do. Uh, all the work we did last year has still held over, given that it only had about 30 hours of runtime on it. So the chains and belts look tight and in good shape yet. And uh, everything's good. So we just need to top off some hydraulic fluid and do a couple of other little odds and ends. Oh, I wanted to check the, the final drives for the... Uh, the drive wheels because I think they might be low on uh, gear oil and I didn't get to that last year so we're gonna check that out but um, I am gonna sign off here today and come back tomorrow and finish this up there's some guys in our area that are already in the fields but given that it only takes us a couple of days to harvest and we only have 26 acres of beans we're not in a big hurry and um, it, it's frozen the last couple of nights and it's supposed to freeze again tonight so uh, and then the temperature is supposed to come up and be really nice. So what I'm hoping is that a lot of the ragweed and other stuff that's in the bean fields will freeze off and start to dry up. And that would help them thresh through the combine better. So that's going to be it for today. And uh, we'll catch you around the bend. It's the next day, Sunday. Perfect, beautiful day today. And I'm continuing to work on getting the combine ready for field operations. I'm giving some of my attention to things that I didn't get to last year when we had just gotten the combine home and we had to do some significant repairs you can look in the past videos to find that so this year um, a couple of things i wanted to get to i had to check the oil level in the final drives which are down here the transmission combines are interesting in their layout the motors up on top and a bunch of belts run down to the transmission or i shouldn't say a bunch but a couple of really big belts run down to the transmission which is slung underneath the machine and then from there the drive shafts come out to the final drive housings which turn the wheels so these have gear oil in them. We never checked them last year. I kind of noticed one had a leaky uh, cover assembly, so I thought we'd at least top that off. We don't really have time to go through the whole process of draining it and cleaning it all out. Maybe I'll do that after harvest. Um, but uh, I did want to at least get them topped off with oil. So we did that. And by we, I should say I did that. Dad's busy with other stuff. So, uh, and then another thing too, uh, Obviously we found all the grease zerks and greased everything we could, but there's a bunch of these dust caps, kind of like you'd find on a axle assembly on a wagon running gear. But there's uh, about four or five of these on the machine that I never got to last year. We were supposed to pry those off and pack grease in there and put the dust cap back on. So I thought in the list of priorities, that's one because we didn't do it last year. We should make sure everything is greased that needs to be. And then at this point, uh, I just cleaned the air filter assembly. I'm gonna put that back together. And of course there was a big mouse nest in there. There always is. And uh, chains and belts, most of the chains and belts look good. I do need to oil them, but I'm gonna get the machine running first. And before I run this machine, I make sure everything's greased. So I'm gonna hit the final grease points yet. And in just a little bit, I'm gonna fire it up. Um, the header, a little bit of work to do on the header. You know, last year was a point of contention. I couldn't get close to the ground because this old 100 series header is a rigid header. It's more made for cutting grain than soybeans. Um, so it doesn't have a floating cutter bar and uh, there's no automatic header height control and you're always 
watching like a hawk out of the out of the window up there and trying to see how high off the ground you are and adjusting the the cutter up and down in little tiny increments so one thing about this thing if you look at it the previous owners clearly hit a rock with it right here and it's like bent back and down so the cutter is not as straight as it should be so i was kind of trying to fiddle around with a way to straighten that out but like some projects you know you think you think there might be a simple solution and then when you look at it closely uh you realize it's going to be a lot more work than than originally anticipated so that was the case with this where i just looked at it and went you know what there are better things to spend my time on and um my ultimate goal is still to get like a 213 flex header and, and adapt it to this machine so it's just not worth the effort to try to straighten all that out i would have to disassemble the whole uh, mechanism and right before harvest is just not a good time to get into a major repair the best time to do it would be right after harvest or during the summer months if we had a little more time so i'm gonna save that for another day but we're getting close well i got everything greased that i need to and uh, everything's put back together and checked so i think i'm gonna fire this thing up and start the separator and uh see if everything's gonna run okay it should no reason it shouldn't but I'm gonna set the camera up and you can watch too.